Hi, I'm Andrew, I'm a live sound engineer and this is Offshore Audio where I'm bringing you tips and tricks to mix better live events. And in this video, I'm going to take you through every single part of the routing screen on the DLive, whether that is routing your inputs from your stage boxes, routing your outputs from your mixer to your stage boxes, or the virtual sound check function that's built in. Once we've got everything going, you'll want to EQ your signals, of course. So why don't you check out my three-step guide to perfect EQ? It's just a free PDF guide that I've put together for you to help you follow my process for great EQ. And you can get that by heading to offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ or by clicking the link in the description down below. Free PDF guide, gonna help you loads. But without further ado, let's take a look at the mixer. So let's begin with inputs because that's the most logical place to start, right? Where the sound comes in from. So we're going to take a look at the routing screen here. Alan and Heath on their mixers like to refer to it as I.O., right? Routing on a DLive mixer means something different. It's about assigning channels to DCAs and mute groups. We want to go to the I.O. screen over here by pressing this I.O. button. And that is where we might, a normal mixer might call it routing or patching or something like that. What we're doing essentially is this is where we connect virtually our physical inputs to our input channels. So across the top of the screen here, you see the physical input device that is going to have an XLR cable plugged into it, right? So the microphone comes from the stage and into one of these devices. On the left here are our input channels on the mixer. That is the channels on the mixer that can actively receive audio and can then process it in the form of, you know, adding gain, compression, EQ, and then mixing it to a master output, sending it further. And as you can see, I mean, there are a lot of them on the DLive. Other Allen & Heath mixers are similar and maybe with a few fewer channels. This system is pretty transferable between all Allen & Heath mixers. You might think we would start with the mixer, but as we explained earlier, the DLive system is a bit different in that the surface itself is not actually processing any audio. So things that happen on the surface are sort of auxiliary to things that happen on the mix rack. So we're going to start by looking at our mix rack input sockets. You see that by touching this button up here. If it doesn't look like that, it might say surface. You touch over here to get access to the mix rack inputs. And so our first tab, local. If you have a DM32 or something similar, then you're going to have XLR inputs and outputs on that mix rack itself. If you were to connect a XLR into channel one on that mix rack, currently it's not going anywhere. But if you want that to come into channel one on your mixer and then that to be your kick drum, for example, you would hold patch and you would find where channel one on your input rack, your mix rack, aligns with channel one on your mixer input channels. And you see here, I've labeled it snare. This is my number one XLR there. I would touch there and that would allow me to patch that together. So this is currently grayed out. What that means is that the connection isn't actually established. And that's because I don't have a DM32 or similar rack with XLR connectors connected to this mixer. I have a DM0, which is just an interface rack that allows me to connect other things to it. So that's a perfect segue to talk about the other elements, the other connections on our mix rack. Allen and Heath have a series of stage boxes that run on a protocol called DX. What that means is that there is a socket on the mix rack, which says DX, and you can connect one of these stage boxes that are labeled DX into that socket on the mix rack using a Cat5e cable or higher, and then you have multi-channel audio from that stage box. What you need to do then is you need to select the DX box because on the mix rack, you're gonna see that it's got DX1 and two or DX3 and four, and we're gonna connect into DX1 and two. It will then show up here. I don't have a DX box connected, but it will show up here where it says mix rack DX. It will show you that you have one connected. And then top row here represents all of the inputs from your DX stage box that you have on the stage. So if we were to say, again, connect our kick drum to input one, the XLR on that DX rack on the stage, and then we connected that DX rack into DX1 on the mix rack, then we could hold our patch key and press one, and you would see that we would connect that XLR finally through the stage box, through the mix rack, into the actual input channel on the mixer. And now we can EQ it, gain up, and that sort of thing. And you can also hold this patch button and then drag this further out to patch all of these things together. I'm not going to do that just now. So of course you have another DX port, so you can have two separate lines of stage boxes going in there. So you might decide to have the first 16 channels come in on your DX1 and the next 16 channels come in 
on DX2. So at that point, you know, you would do the same thing. This is DX2 selected now or DX34 and you would hold patch and you would find 17 because that would be your next stage box. And then you would choose input one because that is input one on DX box number two. And then you would simply drag it out again to make that connection for the next 16 channels. Next up, you have IO ports, right? And these are card slots on the mix rack itself. And you can insert different input output cards here. A very popular one is Dante. And you'll see when I touch this, that we actually have a Dante card installed here. And it is currently connected to a Dante stage box. So you see here that it says Dante 128 by 128. That means that the Dante card has 128 channels of input and output available. I have a whole other video on routing using Dante controller and Dante stage boxes, so I won't get into that. But similarly, if I want to collect sound from a stage box, which is connected via Dante, I need to select my IO port, which has the Dante card connected to it. You see that here? It tells me that the Dante card is connected to IO port one. I know that my Dante card is an IO port one. And then what I do is I choose the channels that I want to fill, right? So I have my Dante stage box connected and I've used Dante controller to route it one to one. That means that channel one on my stage box is coming into channel one on my Dante card. Confusing, I know, watch the Dante video. But that just means that now I can one to one patch from my Dante card to my input channels. And now, again, what this means is that my first 16 channels of my Dante card are coming into my first 16 input channels on my mixer, ready for me to mix, uh, to manipulate, send out, do what I want with. There are two further IO ports available on this particular DM0 rack that I have available. You might not have that available on your rack. So if you have a particularly large stage, you might have chosen to have for example, your first 10 channels be plugged in directly to your DM32 stage box, your mix rack, which is sitting on the stage beside the stage. Maybe the drummer is there. You might then have a DX box, which is sitting from channel 11 further, and you want to take the first 10 channels of that DX box and route them to the next 10 channels of input on your mixer. You might also have Dante inputs coming in from wherever connected to your Dante card. And you might then want to take channel 21 upwards and route it in. And then you can see that your local inputs, that is the physical XLRs on your mix rack are coming in to your first 10 channels. Your DX box, which is connected to the DX port on your mix rack is then coming in on your next 10 channels. And then you've got Dante inputs coming in on the 10 channels after that. You might think, great, we're ready to go then. But there's a bit of a funny feature with the DLive, right? There's only so many fader channels that we can touch on the surface. So you then need to choose which of these input channels you want to place where on this mixer. And you do that by heading to the surface button on the side here. And when you click surface at the top, you're going to have control. And then on the far left underneath that, there's strip assign. And we have six banks of faders here and we can put whatever we want on these banks of faders. So let's be logical, right? At the start, we're gonna have basically nothing. It's gonna look like this. And we want the first faders to just be our channels, don't we? We wanna have kicks, snare, overheads, bass. This is our input channels. Remember, from our IO page, our input channels are on the left here. So back to our surface page, we choose which input channel we want to put on our surface so that we can perform actions such as EQ, compression, generally mixing. And now we can select that channel and we have control over it. You can see we have control, EQ, these sort of things on this channel now. Now it's worth noting as well that on the back of this console, there are some inputs. So to access them, you click on this button here, surface, and you just get the same sort of screen, but now it's the inputs physically on the back of this mixer. So for example, if you add a talk back like I do, you might connect that to channel one on the mixer. And then again, hold patch, channel one on the back of this mixer, the XLR in number one on the back of this mixer into your talk back channel. There's also a DX port on the back of this mixer. So we might have a stage box near the mixer itself. Again, we can route that to any inputs that we want in the same way. And there are also IO ports. So you could actually have your Dante card connected to the actual mixer itself instead of your mix rack. There's also a USB that you can play audio, stereo audio back from. You can route this into input channels. Right, so now that we've got our inputs routed, 
We've got them on the surface itself, ready to mix. Let's talk about outputs. How do we root the mixes out of physical outputs? How do we get sound from our mixer into speakers, into in-ear monitors, to broadcast, that sort of thing. As you might imagine, click on the I.O. page, and then we click on the output section at the top here. We're back to this really familiar screen, right? It looks exactly the same, except now on the left-hand side are all of our output buses. These are our buses that we are mixing to, we are sending effects to, you know, we have our stereo main left and right, we have matrix outs, we have stereo buses, and we have mono buses, and we also have groups here. And then you can configure how many groups, how many outputs, how many buses, how many matrices you have by going to mix rack. And in here, you can actually change how many matrices, how many auxes, how many groups you want. And when you do that, your IO section in here will change to reflect that. Don't do it during a show because you will lose audio. But again, this functions in exactly the same way, right? You need to decide where you want each bus to come out. Let's say you've got some monitors that you want to create a mix for. You got to decide where these monitors are going to sit and then you have to connect them to a physical output. If you're going to connect those monitors to the mix rack itself, you go to local. You make sure you're on mix rack here, not surface, and then you go to local and then you find your mono or your stereo bus. You can also rename these if you want them to be a little more logical, a little more sensible. And then you decide, okay, I want monitor one to come out of output one on my mix rack. Easy as that. If you want the output to come out of a DX box somewhere on the stage that you have connected earlier on, you just select this section here, hold patch, and you want monitor two to come out of output two on DX box one. You do exactly the same thing. Very similarly, you can also go to your Dante devices here and you can send your outputs via Dante. So you're able to send them to a Dante stage box using Dante controller, or you might be able to record them or send them to another mixer, to a monitor mixer, whatever you want. But it's all about getting your head around this like signal flow about how things are interacting, how these buses here are being sent to your mix rack, and then how your mix rack is further connected on to DX boxes or Dante cards and where they then go after that point. Once you've been in the mix rack section here by pressing this button and you've configured how many mono, stereo, groups, effects, bosses you want to have, you know that they're appearing over here. You can do the same vibe with the surface, right? Click on the surface, go to control and go to strip assign. And then you can pick one of your fader layers here, say the last one, and you can on this left-hand side over here, you see there are inputs, effects, mixes, monitors, TCAs, a mix. We want to get our main left right mix, don't we? So you can grab your main left right mix and you can place it on your fader bank. You can actually place it on multiple fader banks. You can put it on as many as you would like. You can have that in the same position on every single fader bank so that your master is always available. But that's how you get control of it. And now you have your fader to turn that up and you have rooted it to your output. You can do the exact same thing with your monitor mix as you see OX1, 2, 3, 4. And of course, just like with the mix rack, just like with the inputs, you can select the surface and there are a few XLR outputs on the physical mixer itself that you can send mixes out of. So if I wanted my monitor one to come out of XLR one on the back of this mixer, I would just patch it like that. It's worth noting that you can actually have the outputs come out both the rack, the mix rack, and on the surface here. And remember anything that you have connected to the surface here, any DX boxes or Dante cards that are connected to the surface here, you access them through the surface output sockets, not the mix racks output sockets. As well as your mix buses here, you also have direct outputs for every single channel that you can just send straight on and outputs for your FX racks and any sort of monitoring your PFL and additional monitoring here. We have to touch on just these last two tabs here in the IO screen, the routing screen, the patching screen, whatever you want to call it. The first one is tie lines. And basically tie lines allow you to route just about anything from your input section to anywhere on your output section without actually assigning it to an input channel. So you don't need to patch it on this input screen to be able to use the tie lines. You might have just connected the microphone to your mix rack, to channel one, and you might want to send that out of a output on the stage, on your DX box. And it's just the same thing as with the rest of them. You find the point where you intersect the output on your DX box. Remember, it just says at the top here, which output device you are using, and then the number of the socket. So say it's XLR number two on your DX box, and you want to send the microphone that's plugged into input one on your mix rack, you just hold patch and you find the point where mix rack one interacts with DX rack output two, and you can make that segment. And you can do that for anything, you know, you might want to take a microphone that's plugged in on the stage on a DX box and just route it straight out of the XLR on the back of your mixer. So you can do that 
create these sin of connections here. So basically it's just inputs on the left hand side, all the inputs, all the physical inputs on all the devices that you have connected to outputs. Again, all of the devices that you have connected and you don't need to use any input channels or output buses to get them in and out of the mixer. So quite handy, not that I ever use it much. Finally is the virtual sound check. And this allows you to both record a sound check and then play it back onto the channels on the mixer without having to reroute your whole input section to get input from, for example, a laptop running a DAW, right, via Dante. Let's use that as, as an example. So what you would do then is you would go to virtual sound check and you would select the output port that you want to use, right? And so in layman's terms, that just means which sort of external input output card, so Dante, let's say in this version, are we going to use to record and play back our virtual sound check? On my mix rack, I have a Dante card connected to port one. So I would select that. Now I can choose that all of my channels are going to come out one to one just by holding patch and doing just like we did. Hold patch, grab that, drag it along. That now means that our input channels here, remember this is the channels that we are mixing during our sound check. These are now going to go into the Dante card output one, and I can then pick them up on my laptop and record a virtual sound check. Don't worry about this. This is quite advanced. Uh, I'll do a video on virtual sound check with Dante at another time. I just want to go over it because we are looking at the routing screen. I don't want you to think, oh, what about that? But basically what you do is you root this up so that there is this connection, right? It's almost like an insert where channel one is aligned with channel one on Dante and you can use your laptop to record that. And what you do is you just click record send. And then when you're, when you're ready to record, you hit record send and then when you're good to go on that you just do your sound check and you are record and you record it using your DAW because all of your input channels are being sent out to your laptop similarly on the next day when you want to virtual sound check you want to get a sound check going without the band there you connect your laptop up to the same io port so that's my dante card on my mix rack in the cupboard over there and then you press the virtual sound check and once you continue with that what that does is it replaces the audio that's going into all of these input channels here so you know remember we set that all up on this input routing screen well now it's been replaced by all of this because we pressed this virtual sound check button. And that means that when we play sound on our laptop over here, inputs here get the sound from the laptop. That allows us to set our levels, EQ, compression, that sort of thing. And then once we're done, we just press inactive again and we're ready to do another sound check or get on with the show. Also, if I've released it yet, then I will leave a link to a video on using Dante enabled stage boxes and Dante controller on the live mixer. Was that one helpful for you? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. Would you like to see other videos covering routing on other mixers? Of course, subscribe to the channel if this was helpful.